Hey and welcome back to the channel, or if it's your first time being here, welcome. I'm the Smiley and today we're going to embark on an epic journey to complete the Borderlands 3 and all 6 of the DLC packages to unlock all of those sweet, sweet achievements. Borderlands 3 was released back in 2019 and is an action role playing first person shooter that has a follow on from Borderlands 2. You can play it solo or in a party with up to 4 players, I did the majority of the game solo but used a friend to help out on a few occasions, especially the slaughterhouses later on in the game. But before we dive in, don't forget to smash that like like button subscribe hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of the gaming adventures or watches live over on twitch at the smiley originally i was only going to complete the main game but as steam includes all of the dlc in order to unlock all of the achievements we had to go through all six of the packs this totals an estimated 80 plus hours of achievement hunting to complete this game as always I start off by just playing the game and enjoying what the game has to offer and completing the main storyline by completing any of the side missions first which definitely doesn't come back to haunt me later on but first things first let's select our vault hunter each character offers unique skills and abilities. I decided to pick Amara for literally no particular reason other than she was first in the queue. Borderlands 3 follows on the story of our character, the Vault Hunter, as they team up with the Crimson Raiders, led by Lilith, to stop the infamous Calypso twins, Tyrene and Troy, from obtaining and harnessing the power of the Great Vault, a mythical alien treasure that could reshape the universe. We drop into the game and met by Claptrap, who teaches the controls in a bit of a tutorial section, before Claptrap is attacked and sucked onto a magnet. We have to fight through our first enemies, the COV or Children of the vault we learn about looting to find weapons or shields to find more protection or more damage after a short while of fighting through waves of enemies we come to our first mini boss shiv who we take down with relative ease and in doing so unlock our first of the 81 achievements yes achievement unlocked you got skills to rescuing claptrap we are introduced to lilith the commander of the crimson raiders and after speaking to her we unlock our first story related achievement we achievement unlocked welcome to the crimson raiders following on through the story we accidentally get this achievement for blowing up an enemy with a barrel barreled right over them achievement unlocked Continuing the story, we do find the vault map and gain control to its power before we ultimately lose this to the Calypso twins. But that's not all! Our path to the Great Vault has been revealed! Next up, Promethea! Don't forget to like, follow, and obey. We also see that Tyreen uses abilities to steal the powers from Lilith. Tyreen has to feed these powers to Troy. With no other options, we bail back to Sanctuary, our home ship, and we get this achievement. With it being the first time that we're on Sanctuary, we do have a look around to see what is available to us here. And we do stumble upon Moxie's Bar. In Moxie's Bar, we were enticed by the flashing lights of the bandit. Here, we are spending all our money to try and find better weapons, shield, or equipment that we could use. But we were attacked by the slot machine. Instead of winning a prize, we won a live grenade and unlocked this achievement. With the machines dropping a grenade and nobody batting an eyelid, it seems like this is regular occurrence in Moxie's Bar. The next random achievements that we got were reaching Whee! level 10. Level 10 achievement unlocked. And also tipping Moxie back at her bar in Sanctuary. Way Tips appreciated. And then the story continues in our quest to stop the Calypso twins. And we approach Promethea, where we stumbled on a distress signal from Atlas, so we decide to intervene. We are introduced here to Lorelei, who is an Atlas military leader. We learn that the Malawan army is teamed up with the Calypso twins and the COV to take over the planet. But we say no. We push them back. At this point, we did squad up with one of our friends, and we were progressing through the game naturally. And for some unknown reason to me, and I didn't even notice it whilst we were streaming, this achievement pops up. I'm not sure if it popped for me due to not having an item to decipher the slabs and my co part of deciphering them bugged the game into thinking that we'd gotten them all. We help upgrade Zero's weapon and take on another boss before returning back and putting Reese back in charge of Atlas and we get this achievement. Skipping forward in the story now, we return back to Promethea and we speak to Reese to try and get another vault key fragment before Promethea is then attacked by the Malawan forces. Fighting through waves of these enemies, we reach Katagawa, the CEO of the Malawan and we face off against him in a boss fight. This boss fight can be rather challenging because he does create clones of himself. With the weapons we have, the shields and the equipment, we are very underpowered. And with the amount of clones that are spawning and making sure we hit the right one, it can be quite tricky. Once we've defeated Katagawa, we then have to make the biggest decision of all in every Borderland games combined. And we need to tell Reese whether or not we like his moustache. Am I pulling off this moustache or what? It's the worst thing that ever happened to me and anyone else who has to look at you. Either option, we get the vault key fragments and this achievement is ours. With the vault key given to us by Reese, we follow Maya to the vault and take on the Ravager. This boss's health pool is massive and it does take a while to take down due to the weak weapons we have at this point in the game. Once we've defeated this boss, we can enter the vault without Maya as Ava has tagged along and they start to argue. Ava, I told you to wait on the ship. It isn't safe here. Vault Hunter, you should go inside. Take your time. I need to have a chat with my apprentice. 
tell to fill in our sack with all the goods we come back out of the vault and once again we are ambushed by the clips or twins what's up bitches <laughs> Drain the power up. from the Ravager and also drain Maya's powers and destroy her. Not to pass the blame on to anyone, but it is definitely all Ava's fault. If she'd have just listened to Maya and stayed on Sanctuary, Maya would have come into the vault with us and we'd have whooped the Clips or Twins together. But oh well, Maya's dead. Moving on to the next story related achievement, we land on Eden 6 and enter a family dispute between Wayright Jacobs and Sir Hamelock's sister Aurelia. We have to save Sir Hamelock first with the help of Brick and Tiny Tina by taking down the Warden, and then we need to head back to the Jacobs Manor in order to find yet another vault key. But we only have a recording telling us where it is. Time to take back Eden achievement six. unlocked, we'll that was cold. Now we're going on a bit of a hunt to locate a few of the fragments and a few more story missions before leveling up to level 25. Really? Level 25! And achievement unlocked. And when we return back to Eden 6, and this time we take on Aurelia. Once defeated, we can head towards the vault for even more loot, and this time we have to take on the Grave Ward. How are we supposed to kill this? Once we defeated the Grave Ward, Tanis comes and destroys the beast before the Calypso Twins can come and steal all of its powers. As the Calypso Twins are really mad that they can't drain the power of the Grave Ward, they kidnap Tanis and take her back to Pandora, where we need to head in order to rescue her. With this, this achievement is ours. Free! Heir to an empty castle. Here is where we head to Canavora, which is a festival held by the COV and turns out to be held on a vehicle we need to chase down and stop. Once we've managed to stop Carnivora, we enter and take down all the enemies and we have another boss fight where the Agonizer 9000. Pain and terror. Oh, they're the... Uh, they're the other magicians in real life. This is a fun boss fight as it tries to attack you with multiple attacks at once. And once we defeat this boss, we manage to save Tanis and we find out that she is a siren and also has siren abilities. After discussing to Tanis that she's a siren, she asks us to go and retrieve the Iridium Amplifier from her secret laboratory, where we are driven to insanity trying to figure out this stupid puzzle of buttons that we need to press in order to unlock the door. Turns out there's another switch. Anyway, upon giving this to Tanis and the Clipsos reveal the location of the Great Vault, which is on the moon of Elpis, and begin charging the keys in order to open the vault, we don't want this to happen and try and stop them. But we find the Clipso twins and we find Troy draining all of Tyrene's powers in order to charge up quicker. But we stop him and we have a little battle against Troy, which is an easy enough boss fight. Just avoid his attacks because they are very powerful. Once Troy goes down, Avra absorbs Maya's powers and Tyrene wakes up. You did it, Troy. Now let's finish this together. She isn't happy with Troy and dissolves his body, gaining all of his powers and opening the vault, which turns out to be Pandora itself. We are summoned by Typhon de Leon, the first ever vault hunter, to Necro Tefeo. But before we go and unlock this achievement... Ooh, achievement unlocked. Apocalypso. We also unlock this achievement because we've been finding skins and heads and unlocking 10, we get this achievement. Whee, achievement unlocked. Vault arms. We meet Typhon, the first vault hunter, who helps us find the last of the vaults by placing three vault keys we have. And upon looting this vault, we unlock this achievement. In a big plot twist, it is also revealed that Typhon is the father of the Calypso twins. After getting the vault key for the Necro to fail, we have to take on waves of enemies. And once we've defeated all these waves, we place all four vault keys, and Tanis tries again to stop the Great Vault from opening, only for Tyria to attack us. And she kills Typhon, who was trying to stop her from taking the power from the Great Vault, which was guarded by the Destroyer. The story is almost coming to an end, and we have one last mission where we need to return back to Pandora for the final fight against Tyrene, which has used her powers to merge with the Destroyer to become Tyrene the Destroyer. Once we've defeated this boss and Tyrene goes down, Lilith regains her powers. But with the moon of Elpy still threatening Pandora, Lilith sacrifices herself to shut down Elpis. She's saving Pandora. She's the Firehawk. Damn. 
Well, Tannis believes she's still alive. We head back to Sentry, and after the credits roll, the final story achievement is ours. Bye, Felicia. Achievement unlocked. After completing the story and getting all the achievements, we then decided to take on a few of the miscellaneous achievements before moving on to the side quest. Here are a few of them now. Get one for sending an item to a friend. Using a golden key on a chest. Buy 20 cosmetic items off Crazy Earl. Wee, my name is Earl. Achievement unlocked. Unlocking 10 new vehicle parts from hijacking. Way mechanical as well, achievement or not. Kill an enemy with a knife on the gun. This is one of those achievements which you should be picking up whilst playing through the story. Feeling a little stabby, achievement or not. Florida man, which is down yourself with your own grenades. The Florida man, achievement or not. Kill two or more enemies with sticky grenades. Way achievement or not. For this, we should get an achievement here. Equipping purple or better in every single equipment slot. We did. Get a perfect score on the firing range, which is harder than it looks. And we actually came back towards the end of the game just to get this one done before moving on to the DLCs. But that's it for the miscellaneous achievements. We're now moved on to the side missions. When starting the side missions, it also helps with these four achievements, which is to locate every known area on every world. As we will be traveling around each world quite a lot to do these side missions, we just got these along the way. Along with that, there's also an achievement for unlocking a reward with each manufacturer. So we did this with each side mission that was going through. As soon as we unlocked one of the rewards, we moved on to another manufacturer while still progressing through the side missions. I am swimming. Whee! Your rewards card achievement and lots. So anyway, the side missions in the game follow the same structure as the main story, so I won't go through each and every one here, but there's six DLCs and the majority of them ask you to complete side missions. They are fun to do and basically retrieval quests or go here and kill this dude quest, except this one, which is well. Anyway, you do get an achievement for completing 20 side quests. There we go, that was easy enough. An achievement unlocked for completing 20 side missions. And you do get an achievement for completing 50 side quests, but you need to complete all the Iridium Proving Grounds and the Circles of Slaughter first. Then it's onto the Iridium Proving Grounds. There are six trials in total, each on a separate area to the main story or the side quests. You need to follow a linear path and kill all the enemies with a timer that you need to get to the end to kill the boss. Failing to do so within the time frame or with dying will require a restart. Once completing all of the Iridium Proving Grounds, we unlock this achievement. And then we're on to the Circles of Slaughter. There are three Circles of Slaughter that we need to conquer for this achievement. And different to the Proving Grounds, this is all done in one arena with waves of enemies that continue to spawn, each having a different enemy type, whether it be the Beast, COV or Malawan. You do get a brief pause in between rounds, but once you die, that's it. You have to restart again. And thanks, Matt, for helping out with this one. And finally, we're on to the last two achievements that are in the base game. And we could have probably done these a little bit earlier whilst we're doing the side missions, as it's a lot of traveling between worlds, find a specific location. And these two are defeat all of Zero's targets. Zero's achievement asks you to go and take down specific bosses, which unlocks this achievement, and defeat all of Hammerlock's legendary hunts. Hammerlock's asks you to take down legendary beasts, but killing them all unlocks both achievements. We beat all of Hammerlock's legendary hunts and unlock all Borderlands achievements. There are a few of these type of achievements in the DLC. Speaking of the DLC, we start with Mad Mox's DLC, which I really enjoyed the storyline of this pack, probably the most. The story of this DLC is that Handsome Jack's gigantic space casino, the Handsome Jackpot, is there for the taking, and Max has decided that she's a rightful owner of it. However, we land on the casino to find out, in fact, it is not abandoned and has been in lockdown ever since Handsome Jack died in Borderlands 2. The casino is now in control of a new owner, Pretty Boy, and we have to assemble a crew in order to take him down. The crew we assemble consists of Timothy Lawrence, a doppelganger of Handsome Jack, Ember, a French pyromaniac, the mayor of the junk people, and Freddy, who double crosses us, but what sort of heist would it be without a double crossing? We talk to Moxie, and we understand her plan that she wants to take over the casino, and we land on the casino. The looting around, trying to find more weapons, we stumbled across our first achievement, which was to beat the house and hit a 21 on a blackjack table. Easy. Hit the 21. We did do this on our first hand, and you can do this at any blackjack table throughout the world. There are a few collectibles to find us stray around this location, which are these hot saucers we need to shoot. These statues are pretty boy that we need to blow up, and then also we need to find all the pieces to the mayor's outfit. Finding all of these collectibles and destroying all of these collectibles does get us three achievements. The next achievement that we get is kind of story based, but is also a missable achievement, and that is that we can miss after Claptrap has reinforced the structure in the junkyard with his own body. But after speaking to Claptrap here again, we unlock this achievement. Oh, return to the chat for the clock structure. 
This can be missed because you don't have to speak to Claptrap in order to progress the game. However, we spoke to him and the achievement is ours. The last achievement that isn't related to the story is to find and kill the wandering debt collector. With Borderlands, they do have a tendency to put in rare spawns, which we find out again later in some more DLC. This rare spawn only spawns in one location on this world. So if the enemy didn't spawn there, we just increase the mayhem level, which reloads the section that you are in. After a few attempts, we found the wandering debt collector. Wait, see ya. Taking it down unlocks this achievement. Achievement unlocks. Woohoo! But back to the story, after fighting three ways, we are double crossed by Freddy. We still progress forwards in our quest to take down Pretty Boy and give Moxie to the casino. Timothy Lawrence is then captured, but we find a way to get through the security and face off against Pretty Boy, who we end up having a fight against. There are stages to this boss fight. Each time we finish the stage, he uses the casino's money to fix up the machine that he's using, to the point where all his money has been wiped out and he cannot fix the machine up anymore and we win the fight. But the casino is set to self-destruct and with Timothy Lawrence still in his cage, he uses the cage to cut off his arm that we use to revert the self-destruct to the casino, leaving Moxie as the owner. With that, the achievement is ours. We complete the mission, all bets off. And that is the first of the six DLC packs complete. The next DLC we are completing also has a great storyline to it, which is Psycho Creek and the Fantastic Fluster Cluck. Sent here by Tannis, who has been studying the minds of psychos and believe that they all share an idea so powerful, it will break any mind. Calling this Vault Halla. We are sent here from Tannis' lab to Creek's mind, where we are also met by Sane Creek, where he translates the psycho version of himself as we progress through the story. But in order to unlock Vault Halla, we need to find three keys from Creek's mind scattered throughout it, to bring them back to this statue to complete the structure. Working through the DLC, we do come across some mini bosses that are getting achievements for taking them down, which are all story related. So we get one for taking down Evil Lilith, Local Morbulus, Dr. Benedict. But defeating the first three mini bosses, we do get another key which unlocks the area to take on the Psycho Reaver. <laughs> this guy. After you defeating this boss, you do get this achievement. Oh, thank God, defeat the Psycho Reaver. But then it's on to find and complete the side quests, which are pretty uneventful in this DLC and they're pretty straightforward. They don't require a lot. There is one crew challenge in this DLC that began to drive me insane and the amount of attempts that were made trying to complete just one section of it almost made me uninstall the game. However, with that, it would have probably been best to understand what I needed to do. All of these things are just sent out and we need to destroy them to unlock some of the thoughts of Krieg. However, only a few of these actually have any thoughts linked to them and you only need to shoot these ones, not every single one that I was shooting at. The amount of attempts we've done to figure this out is embarrassing. But there is one more achievement that we need to complete in this game and I lost the footage and I don't know where it's gone, but that's to unlock the vault holler. That's two down, four more to go. We're on to the third DLC now. And this DLC being a bounty of blood. This storyline is set on Gehenna and many years ago, the company carried out experiments that ruined the planet. The Sheriff of Gehenna asks us to defend the town of Vestige from the outlaws known as the Devil Riders who are trying to steal the obsidian stone from the town which turns out to be an egg containing the Ruiner. And it's our mission to stop this egg from hatching and the main bad guy rolls from taking control of it. You unlock all of these achievements for following the storyline and then there's ones for completing all the crew challenges which is slightly different to the side missions and are more collectible such as finding all the film reels, finding and defeating specific enemies similar to the Hammerlock hunts. However, as I said at the beginning of this video, just playing through the story and enjoying myself does come back to haunt me with one side quest in this DLC that is bugged. If you find the side quest and have the option to begin it, you need to complete it as soon as it's unlocked. If you do what I did and you leave the section that you are in, you cannot complete the side quest as it sticks at one certain point and will not progress. Luckily, if you find someone with a side quest that's unbugged, you can jump in and complete it. We found someone on Twitch and jumped into their game. We completed the last side mission unlocking this achievement and then we also get another achievement from completing all the missions, all the side missions, all the crew challenges and everything on Gehenna. After that debacle, we moved on to the fourth story driven DLC in Guns, Love and Tentacles. The story to this DLC is that we're on a planet for a wedding between Wayrat Jacobs and Sir Hamelot that has been planned by Gage, a supposedly wedding planner. Turns out that this planet is actually inhabited by a cult that worship a gigantic beast we can always see in the distance. Wayne Wright decides he wants to see the venue before the big day. Upon doing so, we witness a ritual that we disturb and Wayne Wright is possessed and it's our job to find out what is possessing Jacobs and put a stop to it so the wedding can go ahead. This DLC only has three story related achievements. There is another story based achievement that we can miss. We need to watch Death Trap kill as many enemies as possible and after 50 kills we unlock this achievement. 
Hey, we're watching Kill 50 enemies. Once the story is complete, we moved on to the side missions, crew challenges, and finding the echo logs. All of these have been completed. We have two more achievements left of this DLC. The first being to locate four of the rare spawns. Exactly like we did in the Moxie DLC, if we went to the area and the monster hadn't spawned, we changed the mayhem level and reloaded the section. After killing all four, we unlocked this achievement. The final one is to listen to this fish tell 25 jokes. Anyway, we've only got two more of the DLCs left to go. The first one we start is the Director's Cut. This DLC follows us as we team up with Ava, as she has uncovered a series of supposedly supernatural killings throughout the various planets of the Borderlands, and is hoping to create a podcast with the help of the Vault Hunters and some of their other allies. The podcast is called Mysterious Leah. Ava to investigate and solve these murders, bringing to light the person or creature responsible. There are only three achievements in this DLC. The first one is for completing the story and finishing off the research for the podcast. However, we learn from our past mistakes and we checked a guide to see if there was any buggy quests, anything that could happen to prevent us from getting all of the achievements in this DLC. And luckily, there is one. At a certain point after defeating one of the bosses, you need to let Claptrap open this door before leaving the area. If you leave, it's the same again. You cannot progress as coming back, Claptrap will not progress forward to open the door but you can do the same again finding a friend you can still do it with them but we learn and we allow claptrap to open the door once finishing the story we get this achievement solve all murder mysteries and Ava's podcast achievement unlocked look at that the second is for defeating hermivorous the invincible that is a boss that spawns and keeps respawning but it's easy enough to complete and once taking it down fully the achievement is ours and the third is a little bit of a grind but once you've been given this new artifact you can see these new iridium piles destroying 50 gives you this achievement and you can just complete this run to get it done a lot quicker in order to do it this way it's the same as the rare spawns as you find this section on the map you go and destroy the iridium piles as soon as you destroy them all increase slash decrease the mayhem level and just rinse and repeat until all 50 are destroyed with that that's five of the six dlc packs to go so the sixth and final dlc that we completed was the designer's cut which really doesn't have a storyline as such but instead it's a battle royale style mode where all your weapons are taken off you so you need to loot around and collect weapons to take on the enemies all whilst the mysterious circle is shrinking forcing you to move closer to the final boss once the final boss has been feared you unlock the first achievement <laughs> And then the remaining two achievements are a little bit more grinder. You need to discover every section of the map, so we spent a few rounds just running around to discover all locations. One more achievement done. And the 81st out of 81 achievements that we unlocked in this game is for extracting 100 pieces of equipment from the arm race back to your stored loot on Sanctuary. And then jumping into an arms race, finding the first crate, finding one of these extraction machines, extracting all items, dying, rinse and repeat all the way up until 100 and with that all 81 achievements have been unlocked Wait. for my first taster into the borderlands world i really enjoyed this completion the fact that the game has been out for quite a few years now and has six dlc packs kind of started to make the completion drag i think if i'd have played it on the release date and then completed each dlc pack as it came out i would have enjoyed the dlcs a whole lot more it was just a vast amount of dlc which followed the same pattern to the main game but with different storylines but overall i enjoyed my time in the borderlands and i have added the other games to the list so if they do come up on the randomizer they'll be next to be completed if you have a particular game that you want me to tackle next in our hunt for achievements drop your suggestions in the comments below or whilst i'm live on twitch and we'll add it to our our ever expanding list of suggestions before you go make sure to smash that like button if you found this achievement hunting adventure as thrilling as i did and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications to join our ever-growing community of fellow hunters but for now this is the smiley signing off and i'll catch you in the next one